Alrighty, next in our quest for OSC control, I don't think I've used the word quest yet, we're going to look at sequence control. So I've gone ahead and use take recorder to make a sequence here. Let's have a look at it. Just of the first uh, third person character running around. So we're going to be using that as an example. So we're going to look at how to use open stage control to play pause, stop, and also change the play rate. So I'm going to start by changing our open stage control UI just so we have the right button. So I did add uh, a couple buttons in here. I just need to add a slide on last. Alrighty, I've gone ahead and created our sequence of controls here. So first of all, I've renamed the buttons. So some of them I've changed the ID, but then stop would be the same ID as stop over here. So that's stop underscore one. And then down here under label, I just called it stop. I've also added a vertical slider here for the playback speed, as well as a box we could type into or would receive numbers, which I need to type numeric true on that. Lastly, I've added some code to our play, pause, and stop buttons. So much like the stop button here with the set record value down here. So on the play, I've done the same thing, except we've added an if statement here. So if the value, which is the value of this button is one, so true, then run this code just so it, otherwise it'll do it both when it's one and zero, which means it stops working. So I've added that for the play button and then I've set the pause button to zero. On the pause button, I've set the play button to zero. And then on the stop button, I've set both of them to zero. So I'll put that on the screen now for you to have a look. But what that does is we can hit the play button here and it lights up and we know our sequence is playing. Then if I hit the pause button, the play button turns off and the pause button turns on. And then that works both ways. So play, pause, play, pause. So we know if it's paused or it's playing. And then lastly, the stop button clears them both. So if it's playing and then you hit stop, it just stops. So the stop button is set to a push button, but these two are set to toggles. Hopefully that makes sense. It's more of a visual thing for you as visual cue or for the operator rather than like a necessity. These could all be toggle buttons and it would work just fine. Ready, I'm gonna go ahead and save it and we're gonna jump into Unreal again. <clears throat> Alrighty, in Unreal, so I have the sequence here. So to use it, what we're going to do is we're going to just drag it out into our level like so. So it creates a little clapperboard. This creates a sequence level actor or level sequence actor. Um, and then it has a sequence assigned to it. Now I could assign it a different sequence if I like to. You could even use a blueprint to assign this a different sequence if you wanted to. But for simplicity's, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go into our stage controller folder here and make a new blueprint to control it. So BP actor, I'm going to call it BP underscore sequence controller. Like so. Go ahead and open it up. Now in the event graph, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these. Then I'm going to create, or I'm going to go into our class settings and I'm going to add our BPI as always. Like so compile, then I'm going to get the OSC message event at the very top. Pretty standard stuff here. I get the message contents, promote it to a variable. Then I'm going to get the message address. There it is, address and string. Compile and save. I'm going to make a new blueprint. I'm going to call this one C. Um, so control address, like so. That's correct. It's probably riddled with spelling errors. I'm going to switch it to a string and expose it. I'm going to grab a reference for it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some append nodes. So we have 
There we go. Append. So we have in here wrong one. One, two, three, four controls. So I'm gonna need four pens. So much like we did with the moving, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually just going to use part of an address and then a known suffix of the address to make it work. So I'm gonna call this one play or slash play. And I'll do this one as slash pause. This one is slash stop. Uh, like so, and this one as slash time, perfect. Now, all I need is a couple of branches. And I need a equals three times. Alrighty, so this is actually getting annoying. So what I'm going to do is highlight these two and this one and right click and collapse to a macro. Alrighty, in that macro, I'm gonna put true and false on the output like so, and I'm gonna put that in there. So we have OSC, Address, I'm going to call this one. This one is our. Uh, this one, actually, I'm going to call this one message address. So I'm going to call this one OSC address. And this one I'm going to call append. Righty. <laughs> So, this one was slash play, wasn't it? Alrighty, what I did was I went through and made a macro for our message. So this just simply contains the append node, the equals exactly in the branch, like so. Just highlighted the nodes and right clicked them and hit create macro, just so we can sort of contain those a bit better. Then I created the custom sequences and hooked them up. Pretty simple to do that. So the beauty of what we're doing here is we sort of only want this to happen we had we don't want except for the change sequence time we don't actually need the values of the osc message so i mean i can grab it there for later but for the play pause and stop it's really quite simple so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new variable i'm going to call this one at level sequence once like so we're going to make it a level sequence actor level sequence here it is, actor, I'm gonna make an object reference and I'm gonna make it public. Then I'm gonna drag out a reference, just holding control to create a quick reference. I'm gonna just type play. And we can see play sequence player is the one we want here. And that is, that is it for that play node. Done. So go ahead and grab the same reference to the sequence player and I'm going to type pause like so, and that's that done. Righty, cool. Stop is a little trickier. There is a stop one in here. If I search for it, stop. Stops and moves the cursor to the end, but I don't think it works correctly. I'm gonna have to try that, stop. Alrighty, lastly is our change sequence time. That is a bit harder. I'm going to get the float at index for our OSC message. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna duplicate this because it's starting to get messy. And I'm going to grab the set play rate. <laughs> Fantastical. <laughs> Alrighty, the value is going to be plugged into there and we're done, compile and save. So now all I have to do is drag our sequence controller 
out and choose our level sequence. Here it is. Save. So one thing we haven't done is in OSC, I actually haven't named all of these. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So under OSC here, under address, I'm going to do slash, we're just going to call it sequencer maybe. Sequencer, and then this one's play. This one's going to be pause. This one's going to be stop. And this one's going to be oops, address. Here we go. This one's going to be time. Because this value here is going to, is an exact. It's zero to two. I would just want this to represent this essentially. I want them to be connected. So rather than doing a blueprint code for that, I can actually do that in Open Stage Control here. So I can take under link ID. I can call this one sequence time. It can be whatever you want. I'm going to copy that and then I can paste that into this one as well under link ID sequence time. And so now what we get is their link together. So same thing if I type two in here, this will go up. Now I can actually type more in this box or I can use the slider here. So that is the quick and easy way of doing that. Obviously that works well for this, doesn't work for example this because this isn't our absolute values in the world. <laughs> so now that that is done, we can go ahead and test it. I just realized I have my research open there, it's okay. So I'm gonna put the address as slash sequencer. I think I have it copied, don't I? Oh, no. I'm just going to copy it here to ensure success and then remove the last one. There we go. Go ahead and save it. And now if I hit play, I'm going to go, I'm going to save this session and I'm going to leave the editor. Perfect. So I hit play. Our character, I pause it, play. Pause, play, pause, stop. Now, a problem with stop is stop does stop it, for example, like uh, for what you can see, stop does in fact stop it. The only problem with that is it doesn't re -cue it. So one important thing you'll often find with directors is they don't want it just stopped and our character disappearing. They actually want it re -cued. You know, they want to see the beginning of it. So what we need to do is we need to make one quick change in our sequence here. I need to copy both the play node and the pause node and put it at the end of the stop node. So what we're doing when we hit stop is we're stopping it and then we're playing it and then immediately pausing it. So we're on rather than ready but hidden, it's going to be frozen on the first frame. So if I hit play, our character starts moving, pause. If I hit stop, the character is now on the first frame, ready to hit play again. So lastly, let's change the sequence control. Let's type two in here and hit play and see what, oops. Can I hit 10? I think two is the limit because of the slider. Now let's try the other way. I type 0 0.1 and hit play. Yeah. <laughs> And I think I can, awesome. Love seeing it work. Hopefully you guys found that enjoyable. I know it was a little bit more JavaScript code for the OSC again, but it's all makes a smoother operating experience and hopefully you guys can improve upon this and hopefully you can fit it to how you use it a bit better. You know, my goal with this is not actually to make the most complete controller, but rather a nice example for you to follow along with.